If you explore the Sonos app, you will find that there are EQ settings. Well, it's a two-band EQ, bass and treble, and there's a loudness switch. But beyond that, you don't get anything more than a two-band EQ. Now, what does the two-band EQ do to the sound and to the music and to the performance of your soundbar or Sonos speaker? Let's find out today. So a lot of people misunderstand EQ. They think that EQ is a way to enhance your sound. Not quite. You have to think of EQ as a way to correct your sound, which is in your specific room, right? Because when you need to EQ in your room doesn't mean I need to EQ in my room because my room may be boosting bass or it may be eating up some of the bass frequency. So what will work for me may not work for you and vice versa. Now, when you get into the Sonos app, there are two bands that you can adjust EQ for. One is bass and one is treble. And it goes from a scale of minus 10 to 0 to plus 10 for both bass and EQ. And loudness switch is just an on and off. So very quickly, let's talk about what the bass slider does. Now, the bass slider, it adjusts the magnitude of the bass. It doesn't extend the bass anymore. So if your speaker is not capable of reaching 25 hertz, moving that slider up and down will not enable it to reach 25 hertz. It just makes whatever bass is capable of doing, let's say 150 hertz, higher or lower. Now, the band is minus 10 to 0 to plus 10, but if you hit that kind of ranges of minus 10 or plus 10, then you might have a serious problem with your room. Now, the same goes for treble. It doesn't extend the treble anymore. Now, exactly where the EQ slider hits the bass, which frequency and at which frequency does it impact the treble? We will touch on that in just a little bit after I run my frequency response sweep. But meanwhile, for treble, it is the same, minus 10 to 0 to plus 10. Now, if you have to hit a plus 10, there's probably something wrong with your ears. If you have to hit a minus 10, something in your room is making the whole sound very sibilance, and you shouldn't have to do that. So most people will comfortably be able to get the result that they want by moving between minus 3 to 0 to plus 3, thereabouts. Now, if you really want something exciting, you might hit for a plus 4, plus 5, but you know nothing beyond that in most situations, unless you know that your room is deficient and you want to do something about it. Now, the loudness switch is slightly different. The loudness switch is actually a dynamic EQ. Now, what do I mean by dynamic EQ? It actually means that it kicks in at the lower volume. So if you're listening to 10, 20% on the volume scale, the dynamic EQ kicks in, the loudness kicks in, it boosts up the range in treble as well as the bass uh, by quite a bit when you're listening to low volume. So it makes low volume listening quite interesting and quite exciting. Now, the more you push the volume, say you hit 50, 60, 70, percent on the volume scale of your soundbar or your sonar speaker, then the loudness is going to dial itself back a little bit. The difference is then not so obvious. Now, the best way for me to illustrate this and to show you and lend true value to you as a visitor to my channel is to run the frequency response sweep. So I'm going to do a couple of things. I'm going to do what a zero looks like on the bass and the treble scale, as well as loudness off and on. And I'll do a bass minus three, treble minus three, and a bass plus three, treble plus three, so that you can see the difference for yourself what these measurements do. And maybe from there on, you will make a better informed decision for yourself how much you want to push it. But I guarantee you, a plus three, a minus three actually makes significant difference already if your ears are trained to listen to that kind of things. Now, even if you're not trained and you're just a casual listener, you may not be able to pick up where the difference is, but you will be able to tell a difference. So let's not go crazy on the EQ and let's see what adjustment does to your sound. Okay, so typical on my channel, what I do is I do frequency response sweep. And response sweep is actually measured by a DSP-1. This is a U-mic, which is mounted in my ceiling. Maybe I'll just let you take a look at why this is, right? So this is in my ceiling. It's actually running through a PC that I have in the corner. It is running a RTX 4070, I believe. And Founders Edition is piping the whole image and the sound to my LG CX TV, which is then output via the Arc Ultra. So for the purpose of today's test, we are just testing this on the Arc Ultra to give you an understanding of what the EQ does. So 
when I do a frequency response sweep, this is at volume 60. So I'm just trying to make it consistent for all the tests. I'll do a lower volume test to illustrate the difference for loudness, which is dynamic EQ, a little bit later. But for the next few tests and the frequency response sweep that you're going to be seeing on the screen, they are all going to be on volume 60. And it is only on the up ultra. Now, loudness is on throughout, right? So if you look at the yellow curve that I have on the screen right here, well, you will see that it is typical sound signature from the Sonos Art Ultra. So there's a bump in the bass, although the bass extension won't be so deep unless you have a subwoofer paired to the soundbar, which I don't have right now. So what you will see is just this, right? So bass is set to zero and treble is set to zero. So what happens when I increase the bass by plus three or I reduce the bass by minus three? So right now you'll see that I pulled up the frequency response sweep for when I increase the bass plus three and I reduce the bass by minus three. So the red curve is when bass is set to a plus three and the green curve is when bass is set to a minus three. Now, this difference is actually quite significant, right? Because you are looking at a two and a half or maybe even three dB difference in the frequency response range from about a hundred hertz, right? So plus minus, um, I would say the changes are made from uh, right about 80 hertz all the way to about 400 hertz or so. So 3 dB is almost doubling the amount of bass. So this is what happens when you do a plus 3 dB or a minus 3 dB, which will half the amount of bass, perceived bass that you're going to be hearing. So don't go crazy on your EQ settings, right? Now, the question next is, what about treble? What does the treble slider do? Right, so let me remove the bass plus minus 3. And right now, the red curve is representing the treble plus 3 and the green curve is representing treble minus 3. So the whole frequency response chart is from 20 hertz all the way to 20 kilohertz. It's a logarithmic graph. And uh, you will see that from this point onwards, about 1 kilohertz, the treble starts responding to your slider, right? So the most significant changes will happen from 2 kilohertz onwards all the way until 20 kilohertz. So that difference, the difference that we are looking at is at least a 3 or 4 dB difference, which means it's more than doubling the amount of perceived treble that you're hearing, right? So for plus 3 treble, you're going to hear a lot more upper mids, a lot more presence, and definitely more brilliance. And when you are playing with the slider and you're listening to the soundtrack, I guarantee you treble, you will be able to tell the difference pretty remarkably. And it's, it's going to be obvious to most people when you start adjusting treble. Now, things change a little bit when you add in the surround channel because surround, and especially when I have a pair of ERA 300, which is not connected, for this test. When I connect the ERA 300 as the surround and I play them back, the treble is going to determine how much atmospheric sounds I'm going to get. Because what does surround do? Surround actually takes the atmospheric sounds and they have very little LFE, low frequency effects, and very little bass that is being pumped to all the surround speakers, be it the like ERA 100 or 300 or even the older play ones or the ones, right? So you will not hear a lot of bass coming out from the surrounds, but you do get a lot more treble. So if you are playing around with the treble on the whole setup, if you have the surround speakers set up, then you're going to hear a lot more surround effects. Now, this is slightly different from playing around with the surround levels, which is a topic that I will touch on another day. But right now, you just take it that when you address treble with surrounds, enable, then you're going to hear a lot more surround effects. Okay, let me just remove the treble uh, response. So this is the bass stop response. And as I mentioned, this is volume 60. And I wanted to talk about loudness, right? So loudness is a switch that I typically leave on most of the time. And what loudness is, is actually a dynamic EQ, meaning to say it will apply a different curve depending on the volume that you are at. So I mentioned this was volume 60. And I will pull up the graph that says, the loudness is off, and that's the green one. So you won't actually be able to see much difference. And you're wondering, so does loudness on and off make a difference? Well, at volume 60 and above, you're going to get less and less of an impact when the volume switch is on or off because everything is already loud enough. So Sonos being implementing this loudness as a dynamic EQ, they don't have to make it any more exciting because you're already pumping the volume quite high. So it does very little to change the bass and the EQ. Now, 
things change when you are running at a lower volume. And to illustrate that, I have to load the frequency response suite for the base settings without the loudness switch and with the loudness switch at a volume of 35. So let's do that. So you will see on the screen here, the blue curve here is actually volume 35 loudness off and the red curve is volume 35, same loudness, and loudness switch is on. So you will see that the bass is pumped up quite a bit more below 200 hertz and from one kilohertz onwards, the treble is actually pushed up quite more significantly uh, as opposed to the difference, the small little marginal difference that it made when it was at volume 60. So the lower volume that you go in your soundbar setup, in this particular case, the Arc Ultra, the more significant it is. Now I have to caveat this, right? Anything that you play with for treble, for Bass and even for the loudness switch for different sono speakers is going to mean different things. It's going to react differently because hardware is something that you cannot get past. You cannot break the laws of physics, right? So maybe on the Arc Ultra, you can do a bass plus eight and everything still holds up because there is a micro subwoofer within this whole, which is the sound motion unit, which, in, uh, which is sitting within the uh, Arc Ultra itself. But maybe in another speaker, say the ERA 100 or the smaller and the older Play Ones or the Ones, right? Those have a lot smaller drivers, three and a half inches only, and that's just one of those drivers. So when those are there, there is a physical limit of how much bass you can put through. So when you try to push plus six, plus eight, plus 10 to the bass and to the treble, there's only so much that the speaker can hold and can deliver. So my recommendation is not to go crazy there because what's gonna happen is you're gonna run into DSP problems, right? DSP is digital signal processing employed by Sonos to prevent the sound from distorting. So if, it try, if you're trying to play a lot of bass plus 10 at a volume that is too high, basically what Sonos will do is it will compress the sound. It will pull back those highs in the bass and those highs in the treble and everything will just sound a lot more compressed and a lot flatter and that sound is not something that you want. Now, the Arc Ultra is probably the flagship product from Sonos today, so it is capable of handling even up to a plus eight or plus 10, but just bear in mind, I've just demonstrated to you what a plus three and a minus three does, and it is doubling or halving the treble and the bass response. Do you actually need to go more than that? Now, in the past, I have gone more than that, and typically when I'm trying to even out the sound response of the uh, soundbar or the setup that I'm doing, because I want to listen to more realistic music and more realistic sound stage. But most people's room can and will be corrected by halving or doubling the amount of bass or treble response. So your mileage may vary and if you do have settings that works for you, maybe share them in the comment section down below. And um, for the rest of this year, while well, this is the start to the new year of 2026, we are looking forward to some new product from Sonos, which uh, 2025 was a relatively unexciting year. Not many new products. We are definitely going to be looking at some new products from Sonos this year. I wouldn't hold my breath and I advise you not to. I have no idea what they're going to be coming up with next, but whatever they come up with, you can be sure that I'll be covering them on this channel. So in the couple of of episodes that is leading up to whatever major hardware launch, I will probably be touching a lot more about the settings and the things that you should know about and you should learn about uh, for your hardware purchases. I have the ERA 300, I have the Arc, Arc Ultra, I have the Sonos Beam Gen 2, I have uh, the Sub 3, Sub 4, and uh, even the previous generation and the Sub Minis. I've got so many Sonos products. Um, so let me know what you're interested in and I'll try to cover these kind of things. I think in the next topic, I'll probably touch on the heights setting and the surrounds settings as well as maybe a separate big topic on its own, the sub settings. So if you are keen, do stay subscribed and I'll run through this series of education and hopefully, you know, if this is your game and this is your business, you learn something from this channel. So I'll see you in one of my other videos. But for now, have a happy new year and wishing you the best of 2026 moving forward.